Before James Harden even got to Brooklyn, there were already contenders. Kevin Durant was being that unstoppable scorer he was before the injury, and Kyrie Irving was playing like a top 10 to 15 player in the league again. The Nets surrounded the amazing duo with amazing depth too that sold this team even more. Now James Harden is on the team. Karis Levert and Jared Allen are gone, but they are still left with Spencer Dinwiddie and DeAndre Jordan. This trade surprised me so much, and them not having to give up at least Spencer Dinwiddie too surprised me even more. Today, we will be discussing how James Harden fits with the Brooklyn Nets and the changes he will be making to this already newly constructed roster. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button to get quality NBA content and best of all, to join this amazing basketball family. I remember seeing all the news that James Harden was traded and the first thing I felt was disappointment. I looked at the Brooklyn Nets roster and saw them going to the finals. I thought the Bucks would give them a tough time, but the Nets would beat them in 6-7 to seven games. I really thought the team would be successful, and they are among the contenders in the league. The chase for the 2021 NBA Championship was really close, with the Lakers being the slight favorites, but then right behind them there were the Brooklyn Nets, LA Clippers, Milwaukee Bucks, and even the Nuggets, Celtics, and 76ers were thrown into the conversation. That is four very equal teams with another three dark horse contenders right behind them. This was going to be a really close NBA championship run and the league was the most balanced that it has ever been. Now the Brooklyn Nets have James Harden and by far they have the most talent in the league. Talent alone will not win you championships but if everything works right you're going to be unstoppable. They didn't give up all their depth to get a big three. Somehow they still have amazing depth. Spencer Dinwiddie is that scorer off the bench that can facilitate the offense if he needs to. DeAndre is a solid center that brings a veteran presence and leader on the team. Joe Harris is a knockdown shooter that is a great catch and shoot guy that can still create for himself. His defense is pretty solid too. Landry Shamit is a young player that's a really good shooter that will only get better from here. Jeff Green is a good backup power forward and the Nets lack in that position. He's also a veteran that has played with LeBron in 2018. And Bruce Brown, one of the most underrated players, is only 24 years old and he's a great wing defender. When you have players like Spencer Dinwiddie and Kyrie in the backcourt, you need to give a guy like Bruce Brown some playing time to guard some of the other team's best wings. When people said the duo of KD and Kyrie, I thought they'd mesh well, kinda similar to LeBron James and Kyrie. KD and LeBron are both big small forwards that can play the power forward position if they wanted to, and they both can create their own shot from all three levels. They aren't bad on defense either. Not to mention their proven dominance. And just to clarify, I don't think they will be the same as LeBron's playmaking is way better for example, and Durant's mid-range game is way better than LeBron's. They have differences, but all I'm saying is that they have similar attributes and they can both lead a team and I think they can fit well with a sidekick like Kyrie Irving. Before this trade, the Nets gave up 112 points per game, which is the 19th in the league, and have a defensive rating of 110, which is 9th in the league. This team had an average to above average defense, and it got a lot worse in this trade. As overrated as Jarrett Allen's rim protection is, he's still a really good one, Karis Levert is an okay defender with quick hands. They weren't deal breakers, but they still help this team. Now they have James Harden, which isn't as bad on defense as it used to be, but he's far from anything great. Even though he has overrated post defense, it is still pretty good, but his on-ball defense and off-ball defense is pretty average. But if he's not trying, he just looks flat out terrible out there. They have players like Kyrie and Dinwiddie which is a terrible defensive backcourt, and they don't have an anchor on defense or an elite defender at all. They have Joe Harris, which is solid. Bruce Brown is actually pretty good, but isn't gonna be the guy to guard your best players, but doesn't have a whole, he also doesn't have a whole lot of talent to get lots of playtime either. DeAndre Jordan is still pretty good, but he's not gonna lock down anyone. Everybody else is pretty much average on defense. If I'm the Nets GM, I'm going out and getting 
just one elite defender before the trade deadline. Even someone like Patrick Beverly or Eric Bledsoe would be fine. Just someone that's capable of slowing down the other team's best players because I don't trust anyone on their current roster. Another thing is their personalities. We don't know their true personalities and like how they act, but how they act in the locker room means a lot to a championship team. At one point in all these players' careers, they have been labeled as locker room cancers. Kevin Durant and Draymond had a ter terrible relationship by the end of the Golden State's run, and he has been labeled as a snake for joining the Warriors in the first place. Kyrie was seen as a locker room cancer in Boston, and has always had a bad relationship with the media. Stephen A. Smith literally said he should retire right now. Do you think that Kyrie is worth all of this drama? No, he's not. He's not worth it at all. A matter of fact, um, let me say this straight up and down. I think Kyrie Irving should retire. I think he should announce his retirement today. James Harden was spotted partying with Lil Baby about like one or two months ago. And just recently, he was spotted partying in Las Vegas during the pandemic when he's supposed to be in training camp. In his last five games, he just didn't put any effort at all, and he only averaged like 17 points a game in his last five games. Just watching the games, it was evident he didn't care. I get that he didn't want to play for Houston, but it's not acceptable what he's doing. Players like Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant would, con would continue working hard to dominate the league when they get to their preferred team. That's what I think makes them so great. I don't think James Harden has that untouchable mentality and many people have their and many people have overblown locker room cancer narratives about some of them, but when you put all of them on the same team, there are so many questions. I don't think it'll end well and I'm positive there will be some sort of locker room drama throughout the season. Even if their personalities and egos mesh well together, there are other things about this team that need to work out in order for them to win. There were already questions about KD and Kyrie being ball dominant. Now you have a guy with one of the highest usage rates in NBA history on that team now. But again, he is also one of the most skilled and talented players in the league right now. You definitely need talent to win a championship, but too much of it can be a bad thing, especially when they're all ball dominant players. I personally don't think this team will mesh well at all. They have two guards that play like guards, they shoot and they dribble a lot, and then you have a seven footer that plays like a guard as well. They have all the talent and pieces to win it all, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. I just think all the play styles are way too similar and too ball dominant. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if they just dominate the league and win it all. If they can find out to complement each other's game, I think it's game over. But that's only an if, and it very well could happen. The Brooklyn Nets can either have a short little dynasty of dominating the league for the next few years, or it could be a complete failure and they could end up not getting a ring at all. I'm slightly leaning towards the side of this team not working out. With all of this mentioned, I don't think this is going to be a championship or bust season. They do have all the pieces for a championship, they have the talent, they have the aspirations, but I don't think it's over if they lose this year. Just look at teams in the past. And just a disclaimer, I'm not comparing the teams, but rather the large amount of talent teaming up in the first year. The 2011 Miami Heat. This was the big three in Miami with LeBron, Wade, and Bosch. They didn't figure everything out and the chemistry just wasn't as good as it could be. Guess what? They lost in that first year. In 2013, the Lakers had the best team on paper. They had Kobe Bryant, Steve Nash, Meta World Peace, Pau Gasol, and Dwight Howard. They were evident chemistry issues, and they just didn't play well together. Guess what? A first round exit. And even last year, the LA Clippers, they're the favorites because they had Kawhi and Paul George and a whole bunch of talent on the bench. This team in their first year, second round exit. I'm definitely not saying this is what's going to happen to the Nets, but if they don't win at all, I don't think it I don't think the whole season is a bust. There are all the reasons to say that the Nets will have a short dynasty, and there are all the reasons in the world to say that the Nets won't win a championship with the big 3 of Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden. Like I said earlier, 
I won't be surprised at all if the Nets just win it all for the next few years. If they figure out the chemistry and they find a way to complement each other's games, I think it's game over for the league. And they have my pick to win it all. But I don't think that's going to happen. If I had to put my money on it, I think that this Nets team will be really good but will just fall short of a championship. I think that there are too many flaws with this team and it's going to be exploited sooner or later. Although the Rockets got Victor Oladipo in this trade and the Nets got James Harden, I think the team that gained the most was the Cleveland Cavaliers. They gave up Dante Exum and the 2022 Bucks first round pick for Jared Allen and Torian Prince. They are the true winners of this trade. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Subscribe for future basketball content. Thank you for watching.